temptation I might find You stayed back, pick up all of the pieces Love we left behind Just kind of like that And it was more like, I don't know, I think I was probably listening to our buddy Jason Isbell or somebody and I was like in that capo mindset. I love capos and I didn't come to capos until I was like, you know, long down the road. Same. I, I, it, and they're so cool. It's such a fun tool. Right? <laughs> yeah. It opened things up completely for me. You know, uh, Dickie Betts' son, Dwayne, mm. um, who's a dear friend, mm. we had this conversation once and he was like, my dad always says, like, this is my capo right here. <laughs> I was like, that sounds like my grandfather, whoa. Like, bar chords, man, you gotta do them. Wait, did you come to bar chords right away? Yeah, that was, uh, that was a big part of the curriculum in my household. What was the first thing that was shown and how was it shown to you? Bar chord was, yeah. I don't remember that one particularly, but the first song was a... Uh, ironically, by the Kingsmen. And then, those are the, those are early. Those are the first two. Those are the jumping off. Mm -hmm. And then it was like. Uh, That's kind of a big jump. That's a Hideaway by Freddie King. So you grew up with records in your in your room? Yeah, I grew up with no supervision, guitars, and a bunch of records. And we didn't have any money for PlayStations or anything, so I had, you know, the original PlayStation. <laughs> and I just had a lot of time on my hands, but my dad was supportive, but he wasn't like, um, you know, really diligent about my practicing and stuff. And my grandfather was military, so the way he, his teaching style was like, if you're gonna cry about it, just don't do it at all. Go, go do something else. And then you say you get tough, you know. I started on drums, drums and guitar. And, uh, you know, learning the train beat. That was your first beat? Yeah. And he was really, really particular about the train beat because, you know, they play Orange Blossom Special every night, like. Like, like that vibe? That's amazing. Yeah. So they were teaching me that, and um, and they even teach me how to play drums. Now, I mean, I guess you call it like uh, interval training, but my grandfather was more like, you don't hear that going to the four? You don't hear that that's the four? And like, are you dumb? <laughs> And it wasn't like in an abusive way, it was just, it was just more stern. He was an old school cat. When I was like really getting into guitar, like 11 and 12 years old, I was like, I don't want to sound like a guitar player, right? I want to sound like something else. So I'm like, what can I listen to? I'm like, what was Dwayne Allman listening to? He was listening to harmonica players and he was listening to saxophone players. So I wouldn't listen to tenor players like, um, you know, King Curtis, I'd listen to King, and I'd listen to singers like Aretha, and then you can knock them all out in one shot and listen to like that Aretha record that's got King and Dwayne on it, and then you start putting all these dots together, and you're looking at just the tenor range, right? So that's what I was infatuated with, with singers like Aretha, and I got by just doing that and like trying to learn like Janis Joplin phrases on guitar, and like how can I make my guitar like gritty like Janice's raw vocals so like the Marshall came into play and fuzz pedals. Are there guitar players that have shown you things? Well like my my instructor when I was in 10th and 11th grade I went to the Fine Arts Center in Greenville South Carolina and I was part of the the jazz theory and the jazz performance classes it was two hour long blocks same instructor 
Steve Watson, and he used to live out here in LA. He's from Greenville, but you know, he played, uh, he was a real like go-to session guy. He would tour with like the Brecker brothers and other artists, but he played like, he wrote the riff for the A-Team and like Hill Street Blues. So like, Steve was just like the raddest 80s cat ever. And he's got like a, you know, cul-de-sac and like a big mustache. A cul-de-sac? Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like this really intimidating little jazz guy. And I love Steve so much. He, you? Yeah. he taught me about this idea that like, like you're an E minor, man. Like, take that minor seven shape and just do what you want with it. So that's a minor. That's a minor seven. Yeah. So you're barring. Wait. So I'm barring uh, just like you would like a sus from the right. A string position, and add that minor seven in there, and then you can do like. <laughs> so if you're gonna be like within the you know the chord shapes of the chord, I mean, usually the rule of thumb is minor, minor, major. <laughs> kind of find like odd, like different ways to shape like a major. Put some tritones in it. And that's the, and that's a, that's still an E. Yeah. So that's G major, you know, and uh, E is the relative minor of G, and vice versa. So. This is like exactly the jazz thing that I've always been like. How do they? What do they do? <laughs> well, yeah, you just find that freedom. Like if you're just in the on the one. And by the one, the one is the root. So yeah. Right. What's the most creative way to not just be in the pentatonic box, like get outside of it, right? So like, if you play like. If you want to get a little creative. that pentatonic box, right? Why don't I go up to the relative major? Let yourself work down. Or you can get like uh, this riff that Steve taught me from Coltrane's like, the next thing? Th then you're back to there? Yeah, just loops. Oh, that's cool. Or you can do yeah. like a, like the, the old school, like the Ricky Don't Lose That. Which is like a parlor trick, but it's like more. That sounds good though. <laughs> it's cool. Like if you listen to Ricky Don't Lose That number, that's the intro. The out stuff I like to do is more like. Like if you want to be Dude. like out, you just it's all about the rhythm, right? And it fits if you if you want it to sound hip, but like it's more of the rhythm. But that's a fun one to throw in of like. So if you just play it over E. Well, you know, like, I mean, for me, sometimes I'll just throw in, like, I like to throw in melodies of other songs. So sometimes I'll be like. That's such a cool thing, then. So it's just sliding around in that position. That's dope. <laughs> yeah, we had a buddy that would always say, like, uh, Roundabout on that booty stank was just man, like cool, yeah. It was excuse me. He, uh, Brian Jeter would always say, "Oh yeah, man, witchy pie skunk stank. Roundabout on that booty stank." <laughs> wow.
when I, where I grew up, Rock 101 was the rock station. And they played Magic Man probably 15 times a day. <laughs> so I find myself doing... You know, the riffs from Magic Man. So sick. Um, or what's the other one I always do? Uh, they just come out a lot while I'm playing, and I'm like, that was from Barracuda or Magic Man. Uh, whoever the guitar player was on the early heart stuff was so good. The, the Wilson sisters were leading yeah, the band, and then, yeah. but that other guitar player is really good as well. Mm -hmm. The drummer is also. The drummer was so fucking Ooh. good. Somebody told me that. At one point, Paige sat John Bonham down and played him the Heart record. It was Whoa. like, this guy is, is, is being you, but better right now. You gotta get your shit together. Damn. That's an apocryphal story, but I That's thought it was. That's heavy. It's cool how <laughs> things are just in, in oh, your guitar yeah. player's head and, that, and that, that you're referencing these things all the time, kind of forever, and they're kind of deep. Yeah. They're deep in there. There's riffs that you go to. Uh, Show me some. You know, like, like when you're starting to blues, like, who did you listen to the most, like blues-wise, growing up? Like, you usually kind of revert to like how they started solos, like Stevie. Hmm. How'd you do that? That's the Stevie, is that? <laughs> or, like a, or uh, let's see, what's another characteristic riff like a, you know, if you're playing slide, you like hit some Johnny Winter stuff. That kind of thing. Or, uh, and I never use this pinky, which somebody pointed out to me and really fucked with my head for like three months. Wait, what, 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 what? Whenever I'm, whenever I'm playing, like if you look at videos of me or something, like you'll notice that my pinky. This guy's just sitting there. My pinky's just kind of hanging around, it's weird. <laughs> and some guy pointed it out to me in an interview and it just totally messed with my mind. And every time I'd go to play, I would just see my pinky not doing anything. I'm like, whoa, he was right. And he just like psyoped me, man. Don't sure. point anything else out to me, please. <laughs> have you, did, did it make you want to start fucking with your pinky more? Yeah. And I was like, I don't even have a callus on this finger. <laughs> I don't know. I was like, I was totally, he just ruined me for a month. <laughs> what was like the first finger picking pattern song that you learned? Oh, uh, probably a... Uh... <laughs> Wildwood Flower. Wildwood Flower. That was my grandfather's favorite song. It was actually, it's funny, it's one of the first trad songs that I ever heard too. Really? Nice. Yeah, at the Charlotte Bluegrass Festival. Presented to me as like, this is the song that people play for each other when they want it, when, when they're meeting. Like, let's start with Wild, Wildwood Flower and like, well, cool. go out from there, you know. Wow. Let's do Wildwood Flower, show people how to play it. Oh yeah. C position, right? Yeah. How do you do your C's? I do that. So you let this, this, your pinky, that pinky is... It's just kind of supporting the ring. It's, it's just in the way, really, I found out. Sounds 
I'll show you something cool if we're talking about C positions. Mm -hmm. Is uh, Marshall Tucker Band? They're from Toy Called One. All them were from 30 minutes up the road from where I'm from. They're from Spartanburg, and we share a water system and everything. Damn. <laughs> you walk into any bar in Nashville or Memphis or wherever you are, and you'll hear people playing KGC mm. like that. But and, so what he's actually doing is. Um, starting in the D position and then you're holding the D shape but mm -hmm. adding this. Yeah, and I mean talk about like characteristic like riffs like toys like That's great. He played it with his thumb. He'd always fall on it. <laughs> what do you do like that? Those are all toy, those yeah. are all toy, toy Caldwell. Yeah, the toy's cool vibrato was like a little more boingy oingy. And I, I learned from my grandfather. I mean, I attribute it to like, like violin vibrato is this way. Which is going, I don't know, like I along with the string, yeah. in the same direction as the string. So I learned vibrato from him and he was a fiddle player. So I think maybe it's a little more controlled if you're doing it that way, as opposed to this way. Right. So that's kind of how I... So Toy's vibrato was more like... Toys, man. I mean, his is so his. cool. I had a violin teacher in fifth grade, the first and last year I played violin. Um, she had a sign on her door that said, uh, "Never play like nobody's watching." So. If you happen upon that sign, catch it on fire, for one. I mean, play like nobody's listening, man. Play like you aren't listening, dude. Just become so familiar with your guitar neck that it's an extension of what you want to say. Just get, get wild, get weird with it. <laughs> like, nobody's listening. Play like that. You know, but I mean, as far as just like, fundamentally speaking, I mean, uh, don't listen to guitar players. I mean, go listen to something else. Listen to a, a singer like uh, like that kind of phrase. Like that's Aretha. so fucking cool. <laughs> that's a boy, you're thinking of a voice. Yeah. Our homie Derek Trucks, king of that. You know. Just sing like, like, play it like it's a voice. Well, there's so much music flowing out of you that, and and it's also, I really appreciate that. You showed some moves, but also like it is, it's part of you, and 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 you're you're not thinking about anything. <laughs> you're like going. It's really I, cool. I wish I'd prepared more. I no just, man, <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, <laughs> but you know, anybody that wants to learn from me, I I really always like to make an effort to at least do my best to explain. I'm just so thankful to be doing what I am doing. Maybe I'll just work on explaining it a little better. I think you, you just, you do you and you're doing great. You <laughs> too, Seriously, man. man. I learned so much. Thank Thanks, you so bro. much, Mark. Thanks for having me. Dude, hell yeah.